Welcome to Backup Exec 2012, Data Deduplication Option. If you're following along in the course materials, we are in Lesson 7. In this lesson, we'll discuss what data deduplication is and why it's helpful to you. We'll also talk about the open storage technology that Backup Exec uses to deduplicate data. And then we'll talk about how Backup Exec supports data deduplication. This is an additional option that must be licensed and installed. And when you install this option, it adds services to the Backup Exec server. Once it's installed, you do need to configure a data deduplication destination. So we'll take a look at how to do that. And then how do you create a backup job that will perform data deduplication? And that's very simple, but we will take a look at how those configurations are done. Then we'll talk about optimized data duplication for deduplicated data. How do I send deduplicated data from one site to another site with minimal ne network traffic? So let's start with data deduplication and open storage technology. Data deduplication is really a very elaborate mechanism for compressing data. It is the ability to look at the data and say, is this data already in my backup destination? So if I were backing up several servers that were the same operating system, let's say server 2008 R2, how many times would I need to back up notepad.exe to be able to restore it? And the answer is once. Even if I had 10 servers, if I have it once, I can restore it as long as it's the same file on all those servers. But data deduplication goes deeper than a file level. It takes the files apart into smaller sizes and looks at those little chunks of the file to see if those have already been stored. So if I were to email this PowerPoint presentation to everyone watching, and we were to back it up from your home directories, your user data directories, we'd only need to back it up once. As long as it exists in the, in the deduplication destination, we can restore it as many times as needed. But if one person were to change a few slides, then when we back up the new PowerPoint presentation, instead of backing up the entire PPT, we would only back up the things that changed, the deltas, the slides that were different. So not only is it very efficient at a file level, it goes deeper than a file level and breaks the data up into small chunks and compares those chunks to what's already in the data deduplication destination. So it uses your disk space for backups extremely efficiently. There are two methods for breaking up the data into small chunks. Those are fixed size or variable size chunks. Different data deduplication methodologies use different ways of doing this, either fixed or variable. Backup exec will use fixed. The default is 64K. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. That's just how backup exec does it. So we compare these pieces using either a hash or a value of some kind, and we just store one copy of each chunk of data. There's a database that keeps track of this little bit of data, this delta, goes with this entire file. So on the restore side, you can restore the older version, or you can restore the old version plus the changes to equal the new version of the file. So it's extremely efficient in how it is able to store the data and keep track of it for the restores. The purpose here is to eliminate redundant data. So when I run a full backup every Friday, statistically less than 5% of the data on that server changes from week to week. So more than 95% of everything that you're backing up when you run that full backup every Friday is the same thing that you backed up the last time and the time before. Is there any reason to occupy disk space with the same things over and over again? And the 
purpose of data deduplication says no. If you have it, you can restore it, and there's no reason to back it up again if it hasn't changed. If it has changed, then we'll back up only the pieces that have changed. So I can keep my data in the same amount of disk space for a much longer period of time because all I'm keeping is the unique data and I can, rest I can keep much more data in that same amount of space. So data deduplication allows you to reuse existing disk space much more efficiently. In the example that we see here, if I'm backing up one terabyte of data, then about one and a half terabytes are what I'm going to need to back up that data plus all of its changes every time I run a backup. So for four months worth of data, I would require approximately 20 terabytes worth of space. Deduplicated data Backing up the same terabyte only requires about a terabyte plus 250 gig for the extra space to back up the deltas. So for four months worth of data, I'm now occupying a little bit more than one terabyte of space. So it is an almost 20 to 1 reduction depending on what kind of data you're backing up and how often it changes. But the real advantage is that you can take your disk space that you're already using for your backups, and now you can, in that same amount of space, store your backups for a much longer period of time because the backups occupy so much less space. So I can keep them on disk for a longer period. Data deduplication uses a technology devel developed by Symantec called the Open Storage Technology. This is the technology that allows backup exec to chunk up the data and evaluate whether or not it's already been stored in the, data, in the destination. We provide APIs for vendors to create plugins for their hardware. So vendors such as Data Domain, Quantum, Exagrid, Falcon Store, and Greenbytes can sell you a RAID array that is a whole group of hard drives and the open storage technology plugin, and now that RAID array becomes a data deduplication destination. So I can send my backups to that RAID array and store only unique data on those hard drives. Optimized duplication, or opt-dupe, allows me to take a backup that was sent to a data deduplication destination, like that RAID array, and duplicate it to another data deduplication destination as compressed data, as already deduplicated data. For example, I can put a backup exec appliance in a small site office, and it has the hard drives in the appliance and it's already configured for data deduplication. So the backups that run in that small site will go to my appliance in deduplicated form. But I want to duplicate that backup up to my data center. In my data center, I also have a data deduplication destination. So I'm duplicating from the site office to my data center as deduplicated data. So the only thing after the first backup that's crossing the, the wire, that's crossing the network, is the deltas. What changed? So even in a full backup, I run a full backup on my site, I'm only going to store the changes. And when I duplicate that backup to my data center, I'm only going to send the things that changed. So it makes a very efficient use not only of the storage space, but of your network bandwidth capabilities. So optimized deduplication is the copy of deduplicated data to another deduplicated des destination. It ensures that only unique data will be copied. 
this has to be done between two OST compliant devices. And if I have purchased hardware, such as the list you see here, data domain and quantum and exagrid, et cetera, then I have to have the same hardware in both locations. In the example of the backup exec appliance, we allow you a little bit more leeway and we'll talk about some of those rules in a moment. There are several different ways that the data can be deduplicated. Server side is the first and that is that the backup exec agent that's on the machine that I am backing up is simply packaging up the data as it always does and sending it across the wire. The backup exec server is using its memory and CPU cycles to chunk that data up into smaller bits and evaluate whether or not those bits are in the data deduplication destination. So the backup exec server is doing all of the evaluation using its own resources. Client side deduplication is where the remote agent that is on those servers being backed up is evaluating the data before it ever sends it. So it's, it's using the CPU and memory on the client to break the data up into small chunks and decide whether or not it even needs to be sent to the destination. So what's getting sent across the wire is only deltas, is only the things that have changed. Appliance deduplication is where the backup exec agent that's installed on the machines that I'm backing up is simply packaging up all of the data to be backed up, sending it across the LAN or the SAN to my OST compliant device. And the OST compliant device is then using its memory and CPU to, decide, to chunk up the data into smaller bits and decide what needs to be stored. So this is appliance side duplication, deduplication. So this allows the resource burden to be placed on the hardware device that you've purchased. Once data has been written into a data deduplication destination, then you can duplicate that to another data deduplication destination. And in this case, we're going from a media server at the main office to a pure disk server at the main office. Pure disk is the data deduplication engine that drives this whole scenario, but you can purchase it as a separate piece. So in this case, we're doing the copy from the backup exec server to a pure disk server, but what's being copied is only deltas, only the things that have changed. The idea here is that this makes data deduplication incredibly flexible and able to scale into your environment in such a way that it is most efficient not only for your drive space, but for your bandwidth usage and you can configure different jobs to do different kinds of deduplication. So I can have one job that is server-side deduplication and another job that is client-side deduplication. So you can completely customize how this happens in your environment. So backup exec support for deduplication is the optimization of the storage space. It is the whole basis of breaking the files up into little chunks and deciding what's going to be stored so that we use the disk space very, very efficiently. The data has to be stored on OST compliant devices. That's the backup exec server, a backup exec appliance, a pure disk server, or any of the hardware RAID arrays that you purchase that have an OST plug-in. To implement client-side deduplication, the agent for Windows sends fingerprints to the backup exec server that says, this is the hash value for that little chunk of data. Do you have this data or not? And if the backup exec server says no, then the agent for Windows sends that little chunk of data. If the backup exec server says, yes, I already have that, 
then the agent for Windows just proceeds to the next little chunk of data. So it's doing the comparison by sending small amounts of data across the network to say, is it already there or not? Fingerprints are generally very small, 16 bytes in size for every 120K of segmented data. So they're very tiny little bits of data that are crossing back and forth between the agent and the server. If the fingerprint is unique, the data gets sent. If the fingerprint is not unique, then the agent just goes on to the next evaluation. This option must be installed and licensed separately. And it allows me to copy deduplicated data from any OST compliant device to tape for longer term storage. If you duplicate from a device to tape, what has to be on tape is the entire file. You can't restore the little bitty chunks. PowerPoint doesn't know what just the chunk means. So what will be on tape is deduplic is fully is full data. Um, if I use the deduplication option, I can use optimized duplication or, or the very efficient copies. You can still run GRT-based backups. So I can still back up any VSS compliant database as a whole, right? Like Exchange, I can still back it up as a whole to a deduplication destination, but I can still restore individual emails and individual mailboxes out of that. Open storage devices and deduplication devices can be shared among backup exec servers if you have the central admin server option. So if I purchase one of these RAID arrays in the OST plugin, I can share that destination between multiple backup exec servers. This is an example of using the flexibility of how deduplication is configured in an environment. So in the main office, where everything is on a SAN, the remote agent, the agent that's on the machines I'm backing up, is just sending data across to the backup exec server. And I'm allowing the backup exec server to use its resources to evaluate the data. So what's coming across the SAN is full data. But in my remote or my branch office that has a backup exec server, I have the backup exec server in that remote office doing a local backup, also with its resources doing the evaluation. So the agents in that remote office are sending whole data to the backup exec server. But that backup exec server has a data deduplication destination. So when it gets stored in the side office, it is the condensed data. When I duplicate that backup job from the branch office up to my main office, all I'm duplicating are the changes, the deltas. So what's coming across the wire is the, only the things that have changed since the last backup. I have another branch office, it's marked as number three on this diagram, that does not have a backup exec server at all. So the agents that are on the machines that I'm backing up there are doing the evaluation for me. So the agents are using the CPU and memory on those servers to chunk the data up into little, little bits and evaluate whether or not it needs to send those across the wire. So what's getting sent from the number three remote branch office up to the main office is deduplicated data. It's only the changes. Once all the data has come up to the main office, you can then duplicate those backups to another location for off-site storage and disaster recovery purposes. So that could be duplicated to tape or to a private cloud or to another data deduplication destination in a hot recovery site. So you can get the data off site again as only the deltas, only the things that have changed. So any major network traffic is minimized even though the backups are running full backups. Makes very efficient use of your network. 
the idea of seeding is to pre-populate the data deduplication destinations. So the very first time you run a backup to a data deduplication destination, it's empty and all of the data is unique. The second time I run a backup, then we can do the comparison and say what has changed. So if you think back to the diagram we just looked at, in the off-site storage facility that had a backup exec server, when that backup exec server backs up the local data the very first time, all of that data will be unique. So I could duplicate that data to a removable disk drive or a tape and it would be full data, but I'm going to ship that ground ship or, or airship that to my data center and copy that data to a data deduplication destination. So now that very first batch of data that has to populate my data deduplication destination has been sent, but it's been sent in such a way that it is not impacting my network traffic. That's the idea behind seeding. So the very first backup is used to populate these places. So you can seed using tape, you can use removable storage. I could run a backup and simply send the a whole backup device up to the data center so that it can be duplicated. But the idea is that you want to minimize the network traffic for that very first backup. After the first backup, all data that's sent will be deduplicated data. For more information on seeding and different methods to seed your deduplication storage devices, please see Tech 163110 on semantic.com support. Client-side deduplication allows the agent to do one of two things. The agent can either do the deduplication and write directly and write deduplicated data directly to a deduplication storage device, or it can send the data as whole data to an open storage device, that's that RAID array that has the OST plug-in, and the RAID array can do the evaluation. So it depends on where you put the load. The choice here is because I may be backing up a very busy exchange server that doesn't have spare memory or spare CPU, and I just want the data to go across and have another device use its memory and CPU to evaluate whether or not that data needs to be stored in that destination. So client-side deduplication bypasses the backup exec server. The only thing that's going to the backup exec server are the catalogs for the backup. So the agent for Windows can now communicate directly with the device as long as backup exec can also communicate with it. It's using NDMP data server and NDMP tape server protocols to do the evaluation and the communication. So the agent provides a path for that backup to pass directly across to an OST compliant device. So an OST compliant device could be pure disk, it could be a backup exec a storage device or it could be that RAID array that you purchased. Direct to tape is not supported for, for the agent. So in this next series of slides we're going to take a look at how these evaluations happen and we're going to begin with a very standard backup. So my backup exec server on a standard backup if we take data deduplication out of the picture when the backup kicks off the backup exec server is going to make an NDMP connection to the agent for Windows or the agent for Linux. That agent is then going to use its data server role 
to package up the data into MTF format and send that back to the backup exec server where it gets stored in your disk storage or tape storage. So this is a standard backup without any deduplication going on. What you'll notice here is that the tape server side of the agent is not used. So the agent is simply using the data server side of this NDMP uh, connection to package up the data and send it to the backup exec server. So this is full data. If it is already an NDMP device, such as a NetApp filer, then backup exec can make an NDMP connection to that device and say, hey, you, back up your own data. In that case, often you'll have a tape drive attached to that NDMP device. And so backup exec is controlling the backup and it's allowing it to write to its own tape drive. But backup exec can also access that tape drive to do restores. So this is a straight NDMP connection. In this case, there is no agent at all on that NetApp filer. It is simply the NDMP connection that is queuing the backup. To do client-side deduplication, the backup exec server is going to make an NDMP connection to the agent for Windows or Linux. The agent is going to request the data from that machine with its data server component. So that's what's packaging everything up and, and gathering up the data that's on the local machine. In this case, it's using the tape server role and the OST plugin to go directly to that OST compliant RAID array. For example, that data domain RAID array. So in this case, all that's coming across the wire is full files. The agent is simply packaging everything up, putting it into an OST format so that it can stream as efficiently as possible, and the OST compliant storage device is using its CPU and memory to evaluate whether or not the data needs to be stored permanently on the hard drives. If the client is allowed to do direct access to a backup exec storage device, it works in a very similar fashion. The backup exec server makes an NDMP connection to the agent and says it's time for a backup. The agent gathers up the data using the data server component and using the tape server component and the OST component the agent is using CPU and memory on the local machine to evaluate the data. So it's breaking it up into chunks and saying, hey, server, do you have this chunk? And if the server says no, what's coming across from the agent to the backup exec server is only the changed data. So this is fully deduplicated data. So it's the agent that's using its CPU and memory on the local machine to evaluate the data and send only unique data. And you'll notice here that the ports it's using are the NDMP ports, 10,000, 10,102, and 10,082. For server-side deduplication, this is if my client is already a very busy server and I don't want to use CPU and memory on the client side. What I can do is kick off the backup. Backup exec will make an NDMP connection to the agent. The agent will do what it's always done if we took data deduplication out of the picture. It will gather up the data, put it into MTF format, and send it to backup exec. The backup exec server also has a tape server role and the OST plugin that evaluates the data. So it's chunking it up into those little chunks and sending the fingerprints and saying, do I need to store this? If the answer is yes, it gets stored. So what's coming across the wire from the client to the backup exec server is full data. The beauty of this versatility is that you can configure all of your jobs so that they take the best advantage of the resources in your environment, whether it's CPU and memory or network, as long as you understand the differences in how they work.
Restores will always be full data. Restores can't be deduplicated data. If I changed one or two slides in this PowerPoint presentation and Backup Exec tried to restore just the changes, PowerPoint wouldn't know what to do. So on the restore side, we will always send full data across from the deduplication destination to the restore destination, regardless of whether that's been redirected or not. Restores are always going to be full data, and it makes good sense that it should be. To install the data deduplication option, this is one of the few options in Backup Exec that makes changes to your Backup Exec server when you install this new option. So let's take a look at what changes happen. Before you can install the deduplication option, you must have a 64-bit Backup Exec server. In most cases, that's recommended. But the cases where a 64-bit Backup Exec server are required are Data Deduplication, Backing Up Exchange 2010, and if you're backing up um, VMware Hyper-V. So you must have a 64-bit server. A quad-core processor or two dual-core processors are also required. If the backup exec server is going to do the evaluation, it does require CPU power and memory on the backup exec server side. Other storage requirements. I must have at least a dedicated volume, dedicated volume, with at least five gigs of free space. This is for the database. Uh, we recommend that your storage device uh, also be completely dedicated, that nothing else writes to that destination other than backup exec. We also need on the backup exec server a minimum of 8 gigs of free memory. That's memory above what the operating system needs. So if your backup exec server is running 2008 R2, that requires 2 gigs of memory. Backup exec requires 8 gigs, so I'd have to have a total of 10 gigs of memory in that server, which will support up to 5 terabytes uh, in the data deduplication destination. So that's 5 terabytes of data deduplication space. The more memory you can give this server, the better it's going to run. That's true for almost all backups, but it's even more true when we start talking about data deduplication. I need at least one and a half gigs of free memory, that's memory above these other requirements, for each additional terabyte of storage space that's going to be deduplicated. If you can give it two gigs of memory for each terabyte, you will get better performance. So if you can plan on two gigs per terabyte of deduplicated space, you get much better performance with your data deduplication. You may have one data deduplication disk storage device per backup exec server. One per backup exec server. And that space may hold up to 32 terabytes of deduplicated data. So 32 terabytes per backup exec server keeping in mind that a best practice is two gigs of memory for each terabyte of deduplicated space. The open storage devices also require that you have a, a pretty hefty backup exec server, but in this case you can use 32 or 64 bit. But you must have an open storage device from a vendor and that has the open storage connector or the open storage plug-in. To see if we support new vendors, please check the software compatibility list and the hardware compatibility list on semantic.com. If you should have a deduplication device that does deduplication, but you have not purchased the open storage connector, and you choose to duplicate that data from one device to another, Backup Exec does not know anything about that duplication and cannot restore that data. So it's very important that if you want to use one of these devices 
that you also include the open storage connector so that the backup exec catalogs know where the data is and can restore it in your environment appropriately without you needing to catalog everything. So this open storage connector is very important. If you want to do client-side deduplication, you need to have one and a half gigs of free memory where the agent is installed. So that's memory available above what the normal operations of that server. Two gigs is better. You will get better performance if you can have two gigs. We do support Linux, the Linux versions you see here. Um, and that we can still write Linux data to these data deduplications destinations. When you install the data deduplication option, it installs like any other option. I go to the backup exec button, go to installation and licensing, install options and licenses. This does require its own license key, so you'll have to add that license key this option, unlike the other options that we've seen previously in this material, adds services to the backup exec server. The other options that you add when you add the application and database agent simply unlocks functionality. The data deduplication option actually adds services to the server. So the services that you see listed here are the services that will be added to your server. The deduplication engine obviously is responsible for helping chunk up the data. The pure disk file system service is what allows us to write that data into the destination. The PostgreSQL server is the database that keeps track of which chunks of data, which deltas, go with which files. So this is a proprietary database that will exist in the data deduplication destination. So this is the service that allows backup exec to talk to that database. On the client side, when you install the agent for Windows and you have the data deduplication option, you will also see a service for pure disk file system service. This service is what allows the agent for Windows to write directly to that OST compliant device. So it allows us to do client side deduplication and write to the, the deduplication destination. So that's on the agent side. To configure the deduplication option, You'll need to create a deduplication destination. This could be either a disk storage device, so you can reuse existing disk space you already have, or you can ex establish a network storage device using that open storage technology. To configure the storage, in this first example, we're going to go to disk-based storage, and when you select it, we're going to say deduplication disk storage. To backup exec, a deduplication disk in a backup job is no different than any other location. It's still disk storage. It's just how is the data stored in that destination. So when I select deduplication disk storage, I can give that device a name, Keep in mind, I can only have one of these per backup exec server. It will ask you where you want to create this deduplication space. On the drop down that you see by number five in the screenshot mark number five, this drop down menu will show you the disk space you have available to your server in order of the preferred at the top and the least preferred at the bottom for backup exec. The one at the top will have the most available free space. This should be a dedicated volume. Nothing else should write into this space besides backup exec. So this could be a, a SAN device that is presenting a, a drive letter to backup exec, but nothing else should write to that volume. So you choose the volume that you wish to use. You can also, also import existing deduplication disk space 
if you are upgrading from older versions of Backup Exec. The logon account that you use here is a non-Windows account. This is an account that the Backup Exec database uses to log in to this deduplication disk space. So you can add your own account. It will not create a new account in Windows. This is simply a database account that Backup Exec needs to be able to write into that space. You provide the account credentials. And then you can add that account to the screen. And it will ask you if you want to enable encryption. By the nature of how deduplicated data is stored, it is already encrypted. It's data that the file systems couldn't use anyway. But if you would like to have additional encryption, then you can say, yes, I want to encrypt the data during transmission. It's very important that you not try to deduplicate previously encrypted data. So if the client is housing data that is encrypted and you attempt to deduplicate it, it will actually occupy more space than it did on the original location. So if you want the data encrypted, it should be unencrypted at the source and it will be encrypted in the data deduplication destination. This is not the same as the backup exec encryption option. This is a different, uh, different setting. And the backup exec encryption option should not be used in jobs that are, are writing to this space. Concurrent operations have to do with how many writes can I do to this destination at the same time. How many backup jobs can write into this location at the same time? If it's a RAID array that the data is being striped across multiple drives, you can have concurrent operations. The rule here is one write per spindle. So if you understand the RAID configuration of your device, you could set your concurrent operations accordingly. If you set this number too high, your backups will slow down. You can change this number after the fact as well. It will give you a summary of what you are about to do. And when you click Finish, it will configure that space as deduplication space. The backup exec services must be restarted after this deduplication storage space has been created and it will prompt you to restart the backup exec services. You can postpone it if an existing job is running. I can only have one deduplication storage device per backup exec server, but that device can be shared between multiple backup exec servers if you have the central admin server option. It shows up on the storage tab as if it were just disk space. It's simply another type of disk space. It will show up as deduplication disk storage, um, but you send the jobs to it as if it were any other disk space. You can also change the properties. So if I right click on this disk space and go to properties, um, I can reset the concurrent operations if I need to. You'll notice that there's a big difference here between deduplication and standard disk storage in that there is only one setting for disk space reserved. For standard disk space, there are three settings. For this one, there's only one. Again, it's a best practice that no other applications write to this space. This space needs to be dedicated to backup exec. It will show me the statistics of the total capacity and how much is used. It will also give you the percentage of deduplication. If you want to add an open storage device, this is if I purchase a RAID array from an approved vendor that has the OST plugin, I do the same thing. I go to configure storage, but in this case we're going to say network storage. 
and you'll notice that when I say network storage I can say either cloud or open storage. Open storage is those devices that have the plugin enabled with them. You give your device a name and then it will ask you the provider for the open storage device. So this would be your green bytes or exabyte or data domain, etc. Any of those approved devices. What connection information do you need to use? This is the logon account that has access to write to this destination. And just like we saw earlier, I can set the concurrent operations. Again, this is one write per spindle. So if you know the RAID configuration, you can set this appropriately. It will give you a summary of what you are about to do. And then you will see this storage device um, on in the backup exec storage screens. You would need to go to the properties of this device and look at the field for client side deduplication. This simply allows clients to write into this space. In the job itself you say whether or not you want the client to do so. So this is more of a global setting that says I want to allow this in my environment but later I'll decide exactly which jobs need to do so. So this should be enabled by default. Now we're ready to create client-side deduplication jobs. So I'm ready to create a, a job. In the job I just need to select a deduplication destination. So it's a disk-based destination off of that storage drop-down and make sure that you choose the radio button that says enable the remote computer to directly access the device. So that's client side and it says in the option here that it's client side. So I can set whether it's client side or server side in each job. And you would also need to say how long you want to keep the data in that destination. This is data lifecycle management that we cover in the, the, the media section of this lesson. You can keep it in data deduplication destinations much longer than you've kept it in the past. Once the backup starts, the very first time you run a new backup to this destination, you will have new options appear on the backup exec menu. Those options are shown down here at the bottom. So the direct access properties and sharing options will appear after that first client side deduplication job begins. To actually perform data deduplication then, you simply create a backup job that writes to a data deduplication destination. So now when I click on my backup button, I will see data deduplication as a separate destination than disk. So you have many more options than you've had in the past. I can also say that I want to create those opt dupe situations. So if I have two data deduplication destinations, I can duplicate a job between them, which is the second option you see highlighted here, and it will be only deltas. If I choose to write to deduplication disk storage, it will be deltas, it will be deduplicated data, but when I duplicate that to tape, as in the third option you see here, it will be full data on the tape. So that takes a little bit longer to run that duplication job to tape. Any backup job can be configured to write to data deduplication destinations simply by selecting that destination from the storage drop-down menu. So if you have existing backup jobs that were being sent to disk, you could edit those jobs and now send them to your data deduplication destination. Configuring for client side or server side is really how do you want the resources in your environment used. If the server is very busy, if the client server is very busy, you may want to do server side 
deduplication. If the client is across a slow WAN connection, you may want to do client-side deduplication. For best deduplication rates, you need to make sure that compression and encryption are set to none. If you try to encrypt deduplicated data, it actually gets larger. We saw the settings earlier for the destination itself to do the encryption. So the data can still be encrypted, it's just not using the setting that you see on this screen. Deduplication is already compression. So we don't need to compress the data and then send it to the data deduplication destination. Again, that will truly make it larger. So make sure those are set to none. When you look at the job history for this deduplication job, it will show you the streaming rate, this is how fast did the data come across, and it will show you the dedupe rate. How much did we actually trim out of sending across to this destination? In this case, we sent a little more than 10% of the data. We had a 90, little more than 90% dedupe rate, which is very good. The very first job that you run to the data deduplication destination will show dedupe rate of zero because all the data is unique. After that first run, you should see very good data deduplication rates. Optimized duplication or opt dupe is the idea of copying backups that have already been written to a data deduplication destination. So it's a set copy. It avoids putting everything back into full data. It can send little, the little chunks of data across. So it's copying only the things that are unique that need to be stored in the other deduplication destination. It's much, much faster than traditional copying. I can restore the data from either device as long as backup exec knows about it. So if I have a site office with a backup exec appliance and I run deduplicated jobs to that appliance, and then I duplicate those jobs to my home office, I can restore the data from either location. Restore data will always be full data. Anything that you do as an optimized duplication that was originally a GRT-based job will still be able to do GRT. So all of the individual files and folders and pieces of databases that Backup Exec supports for granular recovery technology are supported when you deduplicate that data as well. I can only do optimized duplication between OST devices of the same manufacturer. So if I purchase a Green Bytes or Data Domain or Exagrid or Falcon Store device, then I must have that same device in all the locations I wish to do duplication. We do allow you to, to do deduplication to semantic pure disk. So if I have a backup exec appliance in a site office, I could put pure disk in the home office and duplicate all of my backup jobs from all of my sites back to the home office. That, that pure disk device can be shared. I can also send backups to other backup exec servers that have deduplication enabled. So if I have the backup exec appliance in a site office, I could duplicate those jobs to another site office that also had the backup exec appliance. And they would be doing off-site storage for each other, but what's crossing the network is only the deltas, only the things that have changed. When you copy deduplicated data to tape, it has to be full data. So this is going to take considerably longer to do this copy than it did to do the backup in the first place because what got backed up was simply the changes. So when I duplicate to tape for a long-term or off-site storage, that data is rehydrated. It's put back together. 
and I can simply add a stage to my backup definition that says duplicate this data to tape for long-term or off-site storage. Let's take a look at optimized duplication for GRT-based backups. If it is a GRT-enabled backup, you must send those backups to deduplication disk storage devices, pure disk devices, or backup exec appliances. So this has to be a local hard drive. This can't be the OST compliant device if you're doing GRT based backups. But I can still do the GRT recoveries so I can recover individual files and folders or the pieces. It allows me to run much faster backups and the jobs can still be canceled after the set duplication has begun. Um, in older versions of backup exec when I wrote GRT-based backups to a data deduplication destination, Backup Exec would tie up that duplication while it did the evaluation. In Backup Exec 2012, it is letting that, that device be available for other backups, and once every 10 seconds, it is polling the device and saying, what do I need to send you? So in Backup Exec 2010, these GRT-based backups made all your other backups stop while they ran. In Backup Exec 2012, you can run other backups to this data deduplication destination and still have the GRT-based backups run. To create an optimized duplication for GRT-based backups, uh, you could go to the set copy itself and say duplicate, or you can add it as a stage in the job. So in this lesson, we have talked about data deduplication, what it means, how it works. We've talked about the open storage technology, how Backup Exec supports data deduplication, We've talked about how to install and configure the deduplication option, how to create a job that deduplicates your data, and we've also learned about optimized duplication for both data and GRT data.